Good afternoon, everyone. We're just waiting on people to arrive. We hope you're having a fabulous Friday. All right. Well, we will get started. Welcome to the Lockheed Martin Retirement Max Maximization Webinar. How to not miss out on what you're entitled to and get every last penny you can get before your retirement countdown clock. And you know you have one. Show zero. Before we get going, just some quick disclaimers. Today's presentation is purely educational and not meant as tax or legal advice. So please talk to your licensed professionals before taking action. And my name is Josh Strip Matter, and Kelly Bufink is joining us as well today. And we are Strip Matter Wealth Management Group. We are a registered investment advisor since 2007. We are certified financial planners and fiduciaries. We specialize in retirement planning, investment management, estate planning, and real estate investing. And here's our bios. Um, just a quick overview. Again, both Kelly and I have been doing this for over 20 years. Corey is another advisor on the team, and uh, you can read more about us on our website. We have a lot to cover today, guys. We are going to take a quick look at our course outline for today. We have six primary areas we're going to cover. So first, we're going to talk about the historical changes in your pension plan. Then we'll talk about the pension, how it works, and the specific strategies you use. We'll also talk about the ins and outs of your 401k and strategies for it as well. We'll talk about your health care options upon retirement, your insurance benefits, and what you can take into retirement. And then we will talk about the list of the top 10 mistakes to avoid. And finally, we will wrap it up. So let's begin with the changes that historically happened to your pension plan. So I know you're probably all well aware now of the changes um, and the aspects that were frozen. So just some history here. Your pension was closed to new employees starting in January of 26. And then all the pay elements under the plan were frozen as of December 31st of 2015. And then your credited service accrual, accruals were frozen in December 31st of 2019. So there's no further way to increase your pension benefits. But at the same time, the retirement savings program also underwent a change in conjunction with the pension plan changes. As of January 1st, 2020, employees receive an automatic 6% contribution into that savings program, which is up 2% from the past. So if you are funding your 401k with at least 8% of your income, and then the total Lockheed Martin is contributing to your overall savings is 10%. Six from the savings plan and four from the 401k match. But we will get into 401k details in just a little bit. So let's talk about your pension first. Josh, why don't you tell them what a, the official definition of a pension is? Absolutely. A pension is also known as a defined benefit plan. And it provides a specified monthly benefit at retirement to eligible employees if you're vested. Now, Lucky Martin has a pension plan, and it's based on a few parameters that we're going to talk about in just a minute. Um, for people who do have it, you are most likely vested because they uh, have it's it's been discontinued for new employees in recent years. And then there's many so, differences between yeah. both of those. So, Josh, why don't you tell them about the defined contribution plan and the differences of the defined benefit plan? Absolutely. So we're talking about two different plans now. The defined contribution plan is your 401k plan, and the defined benefit plan is your pension plan. So what are the differences between these two plans? Because a lot of the new employees have only the 401ks. A lot of the older employees, employees have both. So the defined contribution plan provides a benefit that's based solely upon the amount of money that you are contributing to your plan, minus any income, expenses, and gains or losses. Provides an additional account for each participant, so you actually get a statement. You can take a look at your statement each month and see how you're doing. Your employer 
can contribute to your account via a match, which they do, that 4% match plus that 6%. Contributions may be based on a percentage of the employee's salary. And so you elect a percentage that you'd like to save of your salary when you sign up for it. And that's how much they pull from your paycheck. You are responsible for your investment selection. So you can choose your investments in, from the available investment options that they provide to you. And then your retirement income is usually taxed as, as ordinary income, depending on how you save to your 401k, because you can save pre-tax, which in that case, it would be taxed when you pull it out, or post-tax or to the Roth. In that case, it would not be taxed when you pull it out. And then you do have to start taking money out of these plans at age 73, according to the IRS law, um, that says that you have to take required minimum distributions. Now, a defined benefit plan is a little bit different and that it's based on a calculation that's looking at your years of service, a social security breakpoint average, and then your income, your average income, and then an accrual rate. Um, you're not required to make contributions. So Lockheed would make contributions on your behalf. You're not responsible for your investments. Lockheed is responsible for your investments. And then retirement income is taxed at ordinary income from a pension when you pull it out in retirement. And then you do have to start your pensions by your mandatory age of 73. There's also advantages and disadvantages of having both the contribution plan, which is the 401k, and the pension plan, which is the defined benefit plan. So advantages of the defined benefit plan, your pension, are multiple, as you see on the screen. First and foremost, it's Lockheed's responsibility for providing you the retirement benefit. You'll know exactly how much you get in advance. And you guys can actually request that online if you haven't done so already. And being able to have the pension doesn't depend on your ability to save for it. So there's also no investment risk for you. The assets are managed by professional money managers that Lockheed identifies right now. Um, well, you're, that's your 401k, never mind. <laughs> now, some pensions yeah. offer cost of living adjustments but yours does not. So whenever you retire and you start your pension, that's the same amount that you will have later throughout the day. And then should something drastic happen and Lockheed not be able to fulfill their promise of the pension, it is insured by the PBGC. Um, and that will mean that they will continue to pay a portion of your benefit, but not all of it. Okay. Now, there are disadvantages with a defined plan. Uh, first off, you do not have an individual account established in your name. So whereas Josh said a moment ago, you can see a statement for the 401k, there's not a statement for you. Okay, It may provide only a portion of your income that's necessary. So you're going to have to use other means to supply the rest of the income that's necessary. It can be difficult to understand the calculations on how they define and determine what your pension will be. There's a formula for that. We'll go over that in just a moment. Um, and also the pension doesn't usually benefit the people who leave the company before retirement because it's either reduced or there's actually nothing to take with them if they weren't vested. So the benefits are also typically not paid out until normal retirement age. And of course, most plans don't allow a lump sum payment at retirement, but rather the monthly income stream, which is what yours is. Okay. So let's talk about how your pension benefits are actually calculated. It is broken down on four different factors, your average pay, the social security breakpoint, the plan accrual rate, and your credited years of service. So your final average pay is the first factor that Lockheed uses. It looks at your three highest years of income during your last 10 years, starting in 2015. So those three years where you earn the most between 2005 and 2015, and they average those out. So add them up, divide by three. So you take these three years um, as that example shows, and then you know your first factor. Josh, why don't you tell them about the second factor, the social security breakpoint. Sure. Social Security Breakpoint is a number that is used to uh, determine the maximum wage base. So Social Security tax is only taxed up to the maximum wage base, which is just around 168000 this year. And so what's, what happens is every year that number indexes and it goes up and inflates. And so 
they look at that number all the way from, back from the day that you were born, and they look at the average Social Security breakpoint factor that's used in your calculation. And so it's a multiple that's used, and we'll see it in just a moment. And then the accrual rate? Yeah, the accrual rate is the uh, factor that applies to your final average pay. It's to, used to determine your benefit. And with Lockheed, you have two accrual rates. Um, so it's based on your accredited service. So the first one is looking up to, uh, uh, when you have up to 35 years of service. Uh, your final average pay after the Social Security breakpoint is multiplied by one and a quarter percent. And then any final average pay in excess of the Social Security breakpoint is multiplied by one and a half percent. So again, two factors, and then that those are calculated in your calculation as you'll just as you'll see in just a moment, we have an example. And here we go as the example. So, yeah, so here is go ahead. A, uh, we'll call him Bob. <laughs> so Bob is a 65 year old employee. He's retiring in 2024 with 20 years of credited service. And so his final average pay as of the date of the frozen, uh, the pension was frozen, was 125000 The Social Security breakpoint, based upon the year that he was born, is 99720 And then the, the accrual below Social Security breakpoint is that factor of 1.25, so $1,247. The accrual above the Social Security breakpoint is that 1.5%, so $379 in this example. And that's the 125,000 minus the 99,720. That's the amount above the social security breakpoint, which is multiplied by one and a half percent to get $379. Now he's got 20 years of credited service. So that's a factor here as well. We're multiplying the 1247 plus the 379 times 20, and that equals 32,520. That's his annual pension amount. And then you would divide that by 12 to determine the monthly benefit amount. Now, this is what's called the single life payout calculation. And what that means is there's no survivors or beneficiaries that would receive a pension if this amount was paid out. It would only it would simply pay out till Bob's death. And then after his death, nothing would be paid out. You have additional calculations that are done based upon the other distribution options. And so here is just a quick overview of these. You've got a single life only, that's what I was just talking about. And that's what that calculation will calculate for you. The second is joint and survivor options. And you have multiple joint and survivor options. So two of the most common ones that we look at are the joint and survivor 100%. What that means is that when you receive your pension at your death, a survivor, your survivor or your beneficiary would receive the same amount or 100% of what you were receiving. Compare that to a 50% survivor, they would receive half of what you were receiving. And so what's unique about Lockheed's pension is it actually has a pop-up provision. And what that means is, is that the pension amount will pop up to the single life payout. So backing up just a bit, when you choose the survivor payout, options rather than a single life only, it pays you less. And the reason why it pays you less is because you are paying it over two lives rather than one life. So uh, the problem arises though, if you are a married couple and you choose a joint survivor payout and then your spouse dies in day two. So it, remember it's a lower payout than a single life payout so what the pop-up provision does is it pops it back up to the single life only payout, the higher payout. And that's in the first five years of your pension. After the after that five-year time frame, it, that provision no longer applies. So you would receive the lower payout for the rest of your life if your survivor passed away before you did. Mm -hmm. Yes, and when we're making these decisions, we need to really take time and make sure we've evaluated all the options carefully before a decision is actually made. Because once you make your decision and you make that election at on your paperwork, when you turn in your retirement forms, you can't go back and change it. You're locked in. So with your joint survivor payout options, what you're basically doing is purchasing a life insurance policy from your pension plan. Because when you die, 
they're guaranteeing that that pension income continues to your survivor. So the risk with that joint and survivor option is that, like Josh said, if your survivor, your spouse dies before you, after year number six, at that point, you're just locked into that lower monthly pension benefit. But there is an alternative strategy to consider, um, and that is where you can purchase your own life insurance policy, which may offer better rates and benefits and enhance the pension annuity option you select. So let me explain how that works. Okay, this is a strategy that we call pension maximization. Okay, so <laughs> this happens to be Bob. So Bob and Julia here um, are getting ready for retirement and they're considering electing the single life option or the joint and survivor option. They're trying to decide which one's gonna fit them best. As you can see on the chart, well, here I am pointing to the screen. Um, it's the difference of $865 per month. Okay, so that's the difference between the cost of single life and the joint life. So you're saying, Kelly, if I choose the joint and survivor, I'm going to get $865 less per month. Yes, that's right. So just like the bullets down at the bottom, if single life option is picked, then we'll receive $2,875 a month during Bob's lifetime. But when he dies, Julia gets nothing. If they do the 100%, then he gets $2,010 per month um, and he dies, then Julia keeps getting that until she dies, okay? So it's really, Julia, what do, what do you want? Do you want it, the extra, do you not? How, how, does, how do you make that decision? Well, that's where we come in and we have um, the plans for that, okay? So pension maximization, what we said a moment ago could be better if Bob bought his own insurance policy from a private company versus through the pension plan. So the way this works is that Bob would select the single life option. He would use that extra income, that $865 per month to purchase an additional life insurance policy. Now, if that policy costs less than $865, then they have increased their monthly benefit while Bob is alive. So in addition, the policy provides a death benefit more than $2,010 per month for Julia after Bob dies. Well, then they've come out ahead on that end too. So what Bob and Julia are looking for is a policy that costs less than $865 per month and will provide a death benefit income more than $2,010 per month. But let me ask you this, Josh, what happens if Julia dies first? Well, he's stuck. No, not if they did the pension max. What happens if they buy the private life insurance? Well, if he gets the if he does the pension maximization, he gets the life insurance. She would be paid out the life insurance proceeds. Mm -hmm. And then if Julia dies, Bob has options, right? So he, he can, can yeah. What can he do? He can cancel the life insurance, mm -hmm. therefore eliminating that payment to the insurance company. Or he can continue that life insurance and leave that as an inheritance. Yep. All he has to do is change the beneficiaries. So there, there's multiple options. You definitely have more control and flexibility when you elect pension maximization. But there are some important considerations here. Okay. This is your warning notice, everyone. It's important to look before you leap which means Bob and Julia should first find out if Bob even qualifies for life insurance first before they make this decision. Because if Bob wants to buy the policy and he makes the decision and tells Lockheed, I only want the single life, but then he's not, he can't get the life insurance policy. Maybe there's a medical issue or, or something that is uh, prohibiting him from being qualified. Well, now they're stuck. Okay. So you want to make sure you put the life insurance policy in place first, and then you make your election on your paperwork and turn it in. We don't want Julia to be floating up the river without her paddle. So, okay. And guys, um, we didn't say this at the beginning. There is a chat feature. If you have questions as we're going through this, please go ahead and ask them as we go. And of course, we'll address additional questions at the end, but we just want to make sure if you have questions, you don't forget them. Go ahead and use that chat feature. Okay. Sorry, a little housekeeping right there. 
Okay, so let's get back to pension maximization. And this is a hypothetical example for Bob and Julia to look and see how would they decide if they need or even want to use pension max. Number one, they talk to their advisor, okay? They would be somewhat familiar with the calculation. Those are the two things that need to happen. So when we look at these numbers, we see both Bob and Julia are 60 years old. That's their age up there at the top. And they're both 65 at retirement. So life expectancy, Bob is 89 and Julia is 90. Okay. The single life pension would provide, as we already said, the $28.75 per month, and the joint would provide the $2,010 per month. Okay. The benefit is not indexed for inflation, so that stays the same amount when it starts. The cost of the joint policy we know is $865 per month. So what we did in the calculation, and you'll see this in just a second on the next slide, is we know that if Bob dies during his first year of retirement at age 65, the lump sum he would need at that death would be 322,171. But if he dies at age 89, his need is $45,425, okay? So the future value of Bob's overall savings based on this model is $510,365 based on a rate of return of 6%. But that means he has to live to age 65. That's his break-even age. So I want to show you the details here okay, of how we figured out what these lump sums are. So when we look at the chart, we're going to look at, whoops, I forgot I can't highlight on here. So the fourth column over, lump sum required to replace pension. So we see year number one is 322000 Well, we said at age 89, so all the way down second to the last is that 45424 okay? So if we follow this, when we follow that column, we know that as Bob gets closer to his life expectancy, you see the numbers go down. That's because there's less and less number of years left where income needs to be provided. We're closer to our life expectancy, our estimated date of death. So we don't need as much money as we did 30 years ago. Okay. So Bob could use these figures as starting point to help put his pension maximization strategy in place and buy his own life insurance policy. Josh, why don't you go over the life insurance strategies? Absolutely. So when you're looking at using life insurance for pension maximization to replace your pension, you need to consider the different types of life insurance that you're going to use. Uh, and just very quickly to, to explain the two different types that, they're, that are existing, you have cash value life insurance, which is typically um, your whole life, your universal life, your variable life. These are called permanent life insurance policies. And so the way that they work is you're, you're buying life insurance and you're paying a premium that consists of life insurance, but it also has an investment component to it. The benefit of permanent life insurance is that it goes your entire life. So when you're looking at pension maximization, it's important to consider that you need that life insurance to last as long as you do, because when you compare it to term insurance, which is the second type of life insurance, Term insurance expires. You typically buy it for 10, 15, 20 year time frames. And at the end of that time frame, it will expire. So a 20 year term policy may expire before you do and therefore leave nothing to your beneficiary, your survivor to pay out. So permanent insurance is typically was used as the main foundation of this strategy. And then you can use the 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 cash value life insurance or the permanent insurance has the, either the entire amount of the need, or you can use a combo strategy. So a combo strategy looks at using permanent and term, and typically we'll use a 20 year term policy. And that term year policy um, is much lower cost than the cash value life insurance because it doesn't have the investment component. So the premium is lower. The cost actually, is not that uh, different. What's different is the fact that it doesn't have an investment component, which makes it go the rest of your life. So because the premium is lower 
for the term insurance, that combined with a premium for the cash value life insurance to make up the total death benefit need makes the math work much better with a pension maximization strategy. So here's an example of this. We see that the uh, total need was 322,171. Um, the year 20 need, 20 year, uh, the year 20 need rather, was 121,833. So the difference is $200,338. That's the amount that we would purchase 20 year term life insurance on. So that in the last year, in that 20th year, what's left over is the permanent insurance. And so the amount that we need for the permanent insurance is the difference, 121,833. That would kick in in that 21st year, or I mean, it would kick in in the first year, but it would be still be around in the 21st year, and it would take you through the rest of your lifespan. So 20-year term expires, leaving the permanent life insurance. The benefit of this is that you reduce the total premium that you're paying for the life insurance strategy. And so continuing on here, the cost of a permanent life insurance policy is 300, or, or excuse me, $322,000 death benefit. This example for this person was $3,198 per year. The, the cost of a 20-year term life insurance on $200,000 and some change is $1,144 per year. We take that smaller cash value or permanent policy of $121,000 and some change, and that's $1,389 a year. Add those together, that's $2,533 per year. And then you compare that to just the permanent insurance, which was $3,198. You subtract those two, that saves you $665 per year. So that's an additional amount of money that you're saving by utilizing this combo strategy. And again, you're getting that additional amount of $865 choosing that single life payout over the joint payout, which fully covers your total premium. And in doing so, you would save you, uh, let's see, $7,847 per year or $654 per month. Sweet deal, right? Definitely. And we said a minute ago that cost had to be less than that $875. So it worked. It worked. Worked. Yay. Okay. Well, Josh, um, let's switch gears. Let's start talking about the 401k, some savings and retirement health care. All right. So for the 401k, um, we already know Lockheed Martin will match 50% of 8% of the employee's contribution. So they put an 8, Lockheed puts in 4. We want to make sure that people are contributing at least 8%. That way, they're not leaving any free money on the table. Okay? Now, there are limits on how much people can contribute to their 401k. So for 2024, um, anyone un can put in $23,000 per year. And then the bonus is if they're over age 50, they can do a catch-up contribution of $7,500. Now, you mentioned earlier there were a couple ways to save to the 401k. We've got pre-tax, post-tax, and Roth portions. Okay, so we're, we're going to hop into those in just a minute. Um, but there is a note I want to make sure everybody is aware of. So the SECURE Act 2.2 that came out says that any contributions as the catch-up contribution will have to go into the post-tax Roth portion of your 401k if your wages, if your salary is over $145,000. And then that wage will be indexed for inflation. And this starts in 2026. So we still have one more year to let all the companies make sure they have these in place. But that will be important to know if they're still working. Now, here's what the match looks like, 50% of the first 8%. So if you put in 8, they put in 4. If you put in 6, they put in 3. If you put in 4, they put in 2. Pretty straightforward there. And the one thing that some people don't realize is that Lockheed's a little bit special because their plan allows you to actually contribute more than the IRS annual maximum of that 23000 Lockheed employees can contribute at up to 40% of their base pay. So the rule is that the maximum 
is the lesser of 100% of your compensation or 66,000 if you're under age 50 and 73,500 if you're over age 50. So this is great news for you guys because that allows you to save and invest more money into your 401k than the IRS says. And Kelly, what's unique about that is we don't know of anybody else, any other company that allows you to do that. So as Lockheed employees, that's very unique in that you can save that much to your 401k. Yes. Josh, will you do the next one? Yep. So you can save post-tax to a Roth IRA once you leave your plan. Um, if you save anything post-tax to your to your uh, 401k. So most people will say pre-tax unless they make the elective contribution to save post-tax to a Roth IRA these days. Uh, but historically, um, a lot of things are actually set, were saved post-tax. So you may have some post-tax money in your 401k. A rule came out a few years ago that allowed you to roll that out and what you used to have to do is go into a separate IRA where you had to keep track of your basis. Now, you can actually roll it to the Roth IRA if you have a Roth IRA. If you don't have one, you should set one, set one up so that most people, when they leave their 401k these days, they're getting two checks. And one of the checks is going into a pre-tax traditional IRA. One of them is going into a post-tax Roth IRA. So it's important to know that if you're about to retire, you're thinking about rolling over your plan to your IRAs, make sure that you're aware that you're most likely going to get two checks. Yep. And then it's important to make sure you have the right beneficiaries on your 401k. While you're working, um, when you set this up, if you haven't looked at it since you set it up, I encourage you to, because this is often a place people forget to update. So a beneficiary is if you die, who gets your money? And anything listed on this account overrides anything you have written in any will or any trust. This is number one, okay? So that beneficiary on there is the one who receives the money. It also avoids probate, which means they avoid going through the court system to be able to get the dollars. It's important to have a primary person and a contingent person. Typically, it's a spouse who's your primary and maybe your kids as contingent. But in case you and the primary beneficiary both pass away at the same time, the contingent beneficiaries are the ones who inherit. And this is where an issue comes up where sometimes there might be an ex-spouse who is still listed on the 401k and the new spouse is not. And it doesn't matter. You can take it to court as much as you want. That ex-spouse is going to get the money. So please update those. Yeah. Yeah, Josh, why don't you talk to them about their stock strategy? Yeah. So, you know, Lockheed is a great company. They've got a great stock that's done very well this year, actually. And for many people, they've saved into the stock plan and they own Lockheed stock within their 401k plan. And there's a unique strategy that you can do when you roll your 401k out to an IRA that allows you to pay less taxes potentially by using this strategy. It's called net unrealized appreciation. And it's basically this idea is say, I've got a lot of stock that I've purchased. And, and typically this applies to people who've been at Lockheed for many, many years. So 30 plus years, you've got a lot of Lockheed stock that you purchased at much lower prices than it's at today. So the benefit of this is that I can roll my 401k out and all of the funds that are not lucky stock goes into my traditional IRA. All of the stock that I own goes into a non-qualified account, so not an IRA. And in doing so, what happens is the basis is taxed at ordinary income tax rates, whatever your tax bracket is. But the gain is not taxed when you do that. You actually roll it into the account, and if when you hold that in the account for one year, all of your gains are taxed at long-term capital gains tax rates. So why would you do that? Well, for many people, the long-term capital gains tax rate is much lower than their ordinary income tax rates. So um, the long-term capital gains tax rates right now are either 0 15%, or 20%, based on what your income tax is or what your what your income is rather. So 
When you look at net unrealized depreciation, you have to run some calculations though. So it's not for everybody. It doesn't benefit everybody. It benefits people who are in a high tax bracket. So, and, and will continue to be in retirement or they may continue to work after retirement. So after they've retired from Lockheed. So this is a calculation that we run quite often for Lockheed employees who have Lockheed stock and they've been there for a long time. And they've got low basis. Sometimes we can save them some money on taxes by utilizing this strategy. Yep. Okay, well, we need to switch gears just a little bit. And since we were talking about retirement, let's talk about medical insurance in retirement because this is often a very costly expense for people when they retire, especially if they retire before Medicare age. So first off, I want to say, you guys have great retiree medical insurance plans that are available to you. Okay, um, you can enroll either beginning at your retirement or when your pension begins. So if you retired and didn't start your pension, you can always go back and get the medical insurance as well when your pension starts. Okay, now because your coverage may be different than the courage coverage you have while you're employed, you want to check your details um, of what you have through your service center, talk to your LM people, okay? They can also provide you quotes on what that retiree coverage will be and their phone number is up there on the screen in case you need it. Okay. So for retirement healthcare, when you turn 65, you are eligible for Medicare. Now, if you are still employed and still working at Lockheed, you don't have to sign up for Medicare, right? But if you're retired and you turn 65, you do. Now, Medicare covers most of your need, but most often you need a supplement plan too. If you use Lockheed's VIA benefits program and purchase a supplemental policy through them, then Lockheed will offer you a subsidy. They will give you additional dollars to help you pay for that. Okay, you have to be enrolled in both Medicare Part A and B. That's going to be a key. Okay. So, and don't worry, if you enroll for Medicare after age 65, because you were still employed, you're still gonna be eligible for the company subsidy. Okay. Now, while you are employed and you are covered from your insurance, if you have a high deductible healthcare plan, you have the ability to save to a health savings account. And this is another great way to help offset your medical expenses, okay? So you have to have that high deductible health saving um, health insurance plan first. That's number one, okay? And what you do, this is an account that helps save pre-tax dollars that can be used later to pay for medical expenses and medications and such. So when you pull those dollars out to use them for those medical expenses, you do not pay tax on them. So you didn't pay tax when you saved them and you don't pay tax when you pull them out. But there are contribution limits on this. For 2024, if you're single, it's $4,150 per year. And if you're a family plan, it's $8,300. And if you're over age 55, you get an extra $1,000, okay? so. This is a wonderful opportunity to help with saving for medical expenses. And here's some extra things for you. So when you use the HSA through Lockheed, we already know you're not gonna pay tax on it. So no, no FICA tax on your contributions. Plus when you retire, those contributions are yours. You take them with you, okay? They're not forfeited like a um, flexible spending account. You get to keep them. You also have an option to invest these dollars. They can stay in a savings or you can put them in the stock market, okay? Now, once you enroll in Medicare, you can no longer make contributions to this health savings account, but you can still use it to pay for those expenses. You can even pull the money out after age 65 to pay for non-medical expenses. Just know though, when you do, it's taxed as ordinary income. There's no penalty, it's just taxed, okay? Just like a withdrawal from an IRA. Okay. There's all sorts of other great uh, insurances you guys have at Lockheed that you can actually take into retirement with you. That's one of the best benefits that you guys have too. These are some listed on the screen. Um, you have your term life insurance. That's your group life. If you elected any of the universal life insurance, you can take that with you too. 
That means you don't have to answer any medical questions. You just get to keep it, okay? You have your special accident, your dependent optional term insurance. So if you have insurance on a spouse, a child, you can take those with you as well. The supplemental medical, your long-term disability. And if you were really smart and put in place that long-term care policy, you can take that one with you too. What's great about these coverages, they transfer into retirement and they don't necessarily require any proof of insurability, which is really great news. Because if you already have a medical problem, you may not be able to get private insurance and this will port over and you can keep it. Okay, Josh, your turn. Why don't you tell us what are the top 10 mistakes people make? You got it. So the top 10 retirement mistakes <laughs> that Lockheed employees could make are not taking advantage of their full 401k match of 50% of 8% of their salary. Number two, not taking vacation and then retiring. So making sure that you're getting your full payout from your vacation that you have accrued. Number three, not using the pension maximization strategy. So we went over that great strategy today. Folks, we use that all the time with people at Lockheed who have pensions. It's a fantastic strategy. If you're not looking at it, you should. Number four, not using post-tax portion of your 401k to save more money. So again, you are unique at Lockheed in that you can save up to 40% of your compensation into your 401k. Remember, after the IRS limits, it goes into the post-tax bucket, which again, once you leave Lockheed Martin, you can roll that to your Roth IRA. Number five, not rolling the post-tax portion of your 401k over into the Roth IRA. So don't forget to do that. Number six, not naming a beneficiary on your 401k. Folks, we've run into this many times over the years is that people just forget. And so this is this also happens when people get divorced, um, where people have actually named the wrong person and they didn't update it. So remember, naming a beneficiary is for, very important because... It's a, it replaces, it trumps your will. So whatever your beneficiary form says, it supersedes all other documents. Number seven, not taking advantage of net unrealized appreciation for Lockheed Martin stock. Number eight, not utilizing Lockheed Martin healthcare and Medicare benefits. You guys got some great benefits. Number nine, not contributing the maximum to your health savings account. That's a great tool to prepare for retirement. Number 10, not utilizing Lockheed Martin Guaranteed Universal Life Insurance. We, we use that tool quite often. That's a great benefit to you guys. And I've got a bonus, number one, Kelly. Number 11, not using Strip Matter Wealth Management Group to plan your retirement. <laughs> well, we don't want to mess up on that one. So, Josh, what steps do we need to take next? So the next steps, folks, are, are to begin to gather information. So I would write down your objectives and questions based on what you've learned from this class today and take action. So what we offer is a complimentary consultation and a little bit more. So let me first tell you, I'll tell you more about that in just a second, but let me tell you what we offer. So we do comprehensive financial planning. We are certified financial planners. We offer retirement planning, tax planning, estate planning, and we charge a flat fee for financial planning services. For the investments, we are an independent registered investment advisor, which means we don't, we're don't we not tied to any firms. We have no proprietary products and no affiliations, so therefore no conflicts of interest. We use institutional style investing. We charge a flat percentage chart. It's based on your asset level, so that is a flat fee um, type way of being charged, which is what's preferred by most investors these days. And then for insurance, we, we own an independent insurance agency. So for, when we're looking at insurances for our clients, we have access to every insurance policy that's out there. You can request a meeting to learn more. And just some quick other items for you. We have a retirement blog on our website. If you'd like to learn more about lucky benefits and some strategies, we have some great newsletters that you can sign up for on our website as well. And then if you enjoyed this webinar, we also teach classes at local colleges, UTA, Tarleton, and TCC. Uh, we've got a class starting up next week for wills, trusts, and estate planning, which is a three-hour class on a Friday afternoon, all about estate planning. And then you can go to stripmatterwealth.com to learn more about those. And then lastly, we offer today a 401k, a Lockheed 401k analysis report. What this is, 
is a complimentary report where we review your existing portfolio for ways to improve performance. We review your risk, your investment risk to minimize unnecessary losses, and you'll receive personal recommendations on how to invest to maximize the growth of your 401k over time. Now, folks, this is valued at a $500 level. And for people today, it's complimentary, but you have to do it today. You have to request it today. The offer expires today at 5 p.m. We also offer a pension maximization analysis report. And so this is, a, this is a report that allows you to determine if the strategy is right for you. So we run all of the calculations. We determine the amount of the cost of, ins of the insurance that's needed to make sure that the strategy is going to work for you. And then we'll put in place a plan to get the most out of your pension based on what we talked about today. Here again, this is valued at $500. But if you take advantage of today, by 5 p.m., there's no fee. It's complimentary. To request those analysis, you can simply use your phone to click on this QR code, or you can go to that website right there. And there will be a place for you. There's two different, two different links. So we offer one report for free. And so you'll choose between which report that you'd like. And then when you do that, you can schedule your meeting. That's a one hour meeting over Zoom with Kelly or I, one of the two. And when we meet with you, we'll talk about all the things that we need to prepare that report for you and to gather together to prepare that report. Then once we, excuse me, when we repair that report, re re prepare that report, <laughs> we will then schedule a meeting to present it to you. So <clears throat> free to you today. If you'd like to request those reports, just click on that link or go to that website and sign up. And that is it, folks. We'd like to thank you for attending today. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot us an email. <clears throat> and, um, and again, we'd love to see you. So if you'd like to request a free report, please click on those links. Kelly, what else would you, would you like to tell them? Um, if you have any pressing questions right now, I mean, feel free to ask. We have a little bit of time left. So Josh and I will stick around to ask those individual questions for you. You can see those or you can use the chat box to be able to see any questions you may have. I know people. Yeah, folks, so just type it in the chat things. box. <laughs> so we just need the, the first brave person. <laughs> Well, that's what happened last time. One person asked a question and then multiple started asking questions. So it was great. Nobody just ever wants to raise their hand first. That's right. Yep. So. Yeah, I think that this uh, this is a great summary, folks. So we'll send you a copy of this presentation after today's meeting as well. And you're welcome to rewatch it or send it to, to your friends, whoever you'd like, and share it. Um, and Kelly, I haven't seen... Located. Uh, let me tell you where we're located. So we are located in Fort Worth. However, we do have clients all over the world, which is why Zoom, Teams, phone, there's all sorts of ways that we meet with people. Um, we've had a number of people in Lockheed areas around the world. So just want to make sure you knew that and that you're comfortable with that as well. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Well, well, Kelly, another great webinar. Yes. Thank you, everybody. We look forward to meeting with you soon. Have, Have a good day. Bye-bye.